12. So this is just a quick video to take you through your second task for the term, which is the director's notebook. Um, I'm going to take you through basically what the requirements of the director's notebook are. Um, and I'll take you through each criterion carefully so that you can see uh, what's being expected of you and what you're being marked on as well. Um, just a reminder that at the start, at the end of this term rather, so term one will be focusing on part A and part B, and that is due um, in early December. Okay, so you can check the assessment schedule for those dates. So um, these are some of the key terms that you've already been exposed to um, during our sessions and our, together, our lessons together this term. So playwright's intention, contextual background, the directorial intentions, the intended impact on the audience. And we've also started to go back and use the term given circumstances, which you know that we started to um, address when we did our unit on Stanislavski in realism last year. All right, so these are some key terms to take note of. And it'll be expected that you can uh, use these terms in your director's notebook. These, this is theatre theater terminology. All right. So what's a director's notebook? It is um, a document that's developed by a director and it's usually prior to rehearsals and any meetings that they usually would have with the performance um, or production team or the actors. Um, it's also a record, and this is really what your notebook is, it's a record of the director's personal process of interpreting the play, of how they develop their intention, and it also gives us an idea of what the impact is that the director wants to have on the audience. Um, usually, guys, as well, it's the place where the director begins to think about how particular moments might be staged using elements of performance or production. So it's usually a mixture of them writing and uh, blocking and putting in images and cutting out the script and writing notes next to it and things like that. It's a practical notebook. Something like this might also form part of the director's notebook, particularly when they're looking at costuming for characters uh, and staging as well. So the task of a director, Year 12, is to prepare a piece of theatre for an audience. And that's really what you're doing with this director's notebook task. So the director works very closely with designers to develop a vision for the setting, for the atmosphere, and generally just the aesthetics, guys, of the piece of theatre. So what is it going to look like when it comes to life? Um, as a director as well, they might also work in collaboration with the production team. Um, and also with performers to sort of bring that performance together. So there's a lot of different roles that the director will play, but quite often it's communicating with other people who bring the production to life. So let's take a look at the criteria. Um, the entire director's notebook, year 12, is worth 32 marks. So each criterion is worth eight marks, okay, which is pretty similar to uh, your research presentation as well. All right. So criterion A, let's have a look. We're looking here, guys, at the play, all right? The context of the play and the ideas that are presented within the play. So this is theatre in context. It's very similar to what you have already done when you did A Doll's House uh, last term, uh, last year, rather, for your other director's notebook task as well. So your mock task would be quite similar to this one. However, in this director's notebook task, you're expected to showcase a bit more understanding. So two key questions, guys. To what extent do you research and explain the theoretical and cultural context? You hear that a lot in theatre and you also had to do that for your research presentation. So they should not be two terms that you are unfamiliar with. So to what extent do you research and explain the theoretical and cultural context from where the play originates? So that means that you need to go and do some research about the era in which the play was written. Uh, you also need to do some research about uh, the time that the playwright lived in. So what was happening when the playwright was writing this play? Because that might have influenced why they chose to write the play as well, particularly if there was um, political or social movements happening, kind of like Brecht, who was living in Nazi Germany. Um, the other thing that you want to do is you want to start to research the play's setting. So even though the playwright might have lived in a particular time period, the play might be set in a completely different country in a different era. So you want to research both of those things, okay? And the second question is, to what extent does the student explain the ideas that are addressed in the play? And how do you explain how the playwright presents these ideas? So generally the playwright is one person, but sometimes a theatre company will write the play as well. So we're going to go into detail about this um, later in today's lesson. All right. 
So in order to do well in criterion A, in order to be excellent, you need to present and explain. Explain is in bold, the theoretical and or cultural context from which the play originates. If you want to do well and be in that seven to eight band, let me tell you, you want to talk about the cultural and the theoretical context. And in fact, even if you want to be able to get a six. So we know that the difference between explaining is justifying and providing reasoning, whereas describing sometimes is just telling me information. Okay. Um, and if you're outlining, you are then listing or just briefly uh, describing information. So the more, the better in terms of your detail. Um, and then secondly, the student clearly explains the ideas addressed in the play text and how these are presented by the playwright. So you really need to be able to talk about themes here, guys, um, and maybe key issues that are presented in the play. All right, let's take a look at criterion B. I'm going to have to go backwards for a second. Criterion B. This is something that we've been already starting to do this term, so it should be quite fresh uh, in your mind. This is to do with what theatre exposure have you had as a student. So to what extent does the student present a variety of artistic responses, creative ideas and explorations of the play text? I'm going to talk about that in a moment. But the second part of Criterion B is to what extent does, does the student make links to a range of experiences of live theatre that you've already seen? So there's two things that you need to be able to do in Criterion B. Firstly, you need to explain once you've read the play that you've chosen to direct. Wow, that's cool. What's my vision for this? What are all the visions that I have for presenting this whole play? Okay, so this is the part where you literally get to let your imagination run wild. It's all the possibilities that you could explore in terms of creative ideas, how you might stage this, how you could possibly um, present a particular character, how the set might look. It's basically you brain vomiting all your ideas that you've had once you close that play for the first time, all right? A good way to do that sometimes is by mind mapping or presenting ideas in a table as well. Secondly, um, so your artistic responses to the play is one thing. What's my creative vision as soon as I finish reading the play? Secondly, guys, you need to be able to say how your experience viewing live theatre, and that can also be live digital filmed theatre, as we have been watching uh, this term on Digital Theatre Plus. But you need to be able to say, look, I'm really inspired by She Loves Me because when I watched the digital live uh, performance from Broadway, I was really inspired and motivated by how the director chose to present the set. When the doors opened towards the audience, it actually invited the audience in. Um, and you might talk about a different performance like Othello, which we went to watch last year, um, and how the minimalistic lighting created tension. So in this second dot point, in order to do well, you want to speak about at least two pieces of live theatre that you have already seen. One can be digital if you want it to be, or both can be digital, that have inspired your visions. As a director, maybe you've watched something and you've come away going, wow, I'd really like to try that out. So you need to make sure that you're doing two things, telling us all your ideas about the play and how you could possibly direct it. And then number two, referring to at least two pieces of live theatre that have inspired you in terms of creating tension, emotion, atmosphere, and meaning. So criterion B, in order to do well, again, it's the explaining factor. The student explains their artistic responses. You don't just say, I think it would be cool to present this in a park. You need to tell me why. Why does that have any significance? What uh, issues in the play might that, um, I guess, expand on if you presented it outside, for example? Um, and this is done before you actually start to map out your whole director's notebook. So we'll go through that in our lessons. Secondly, guys, the student makes clear and effective links to a range, a range of live theatre experiences. A range for a seven is usually about three, maximum three. If you can do three to four, three is enough though, in part B, that's completely fine. A minimum of two in order to at least get a six or a seven, okay? If you don't have enough references to live theatre performance in this section, you're going to be in the three to four, 
or the one to two section and you're you're also going to be in that section as well if you don't actually give me detail as to how those performances really inspired you or um, spark some creative ideas guys criterion c presenting theater this is all about you now this is about what you have in your mind as a director in terms of your intentions and the intended impact that you want to have on your audience so the first question says, to what extent does the student explain their directorial intentions for staging the entire play? If I was to stage this play, because this is hypothetical, you're not actually going to present the play. This is how I would stage the play. These are the elements that I would use. This is where I would set the play. This is the sort of stage I would use. Now, you would need to support those intentions with a range of imaginative produc production and performance ideas. So what that means is this is all hypothetical, but you need to be able to put in some visual, I guess, um, insight into your director's notebook pictures, uh, images, sketches into this section. So we could see if you presented this, the entire play, this is what you would do. All right. The second thing, to what extent does the student explain the impact that they want to have on the audience. So if you presented this entire play to an audience of 300 people, let's say, what impact do you want to have on the audience? Okay. And the second part of that is how do performance and production elements, so we're talking acting skills, we're talking movement, we're talking sound, we're talking lighting, uh, we're talking costuming, we're talking set design props, etc. All of those things that you make choices about, how would they work together to create your intended impact on the audience? So what impact do you want to have on the audience? And what performance and production elements are you going to use to help create this intended impact? And that's part C. Okay. So, again, we're looking at the explaining and the describing. Okay, notice they say they're appropriate, effective and feasible directorial intentions for the staging of the play text. This is consistently supported by a range of imaginative production and performance ideas. Notice that they say year 12, appropriate, and this is highlighted in blue, effective and feasible. It's got to be doable. You can't say that you're going to go to Mars and present theatre to aliens. Could it happen? I don't know. But the point is, it wouldn't be feasible for Ivy Theatre. The point is, make it manageable, make it doable, make it appropriate to the play. And that's where we always go back to the given circumstances and making sure that we address what the playwright's intentions are. Last but not least, Criterion D. So in Criterion D, Year 12, we're presenting the theatre. And what you're going to do here is you're actually going to select two moments of theatre, two pieces of text from the play that you give detailed directions to. So, to what extent does the student explain how they would stage two specific moments of the play and the play text that you choose, the excerpts, cannot be edited, cut, or altered. It must be continuous text. You can't take a little bit from page one and a little bit from page 15. So you're going to choose two areas of the play. It doesn't have to be a whole scene. It can just be an extract to direct and to actually, I guess, block out and in detail show us how you would direct those two moments. The second part of that says, to what extent does the student explain how they would use their performance and production elements? which I spoke about just before for Criterion C, in these two moments of the play to, to effectively create his team again, tension, emotion, atmosphere, and meaning for the audience. And this is why in this section you only need to do two moments of theatre because there's a lot that you need to pull out just of those two moments of theatre from the play. Candidates who only address one specific moment of the play will not be awarded a mark higher than four because they've asked you to do two. So you can't possibly get an eight or a seven for this section. So the difference between Criterion C and D is that Criterion C is kind of you regurgitating all your ideas if you could do the whole thing. And that's a little bit less detailed than Criterion D because Criterion D you'll actually present those moments in the script and you'll block out stage directions and you'll put in what each character's costume will be and the lighting and the sound, etc. 
So in a nutshell, Year 12, that is your director's notebook. I'm going to take you through as well a sample director's notebook. We'll go through this in detail in class together and what that director's notebook looks like. If you have a look at my screen here, I'm just going to take you through a sample. But the director's notebook is 20 pages, maximum of 20 pages. Um, and so you can see that this student has really detailed uh, their director's notebook clearly, and that's important. It should be easy to follow. So each part of the criteria should form part A, part B, part C, etc. You'll notice as I go through that, yes, there is a lot of writing, but the student, once they get to criterion C and D, they actually start to put in a lot of images. There's some sketches, there's tables, um, and there's lots of little flow charts and things like that. So it is a creative piece, but it also has to be explained um, explicitly, that is, what your intentions are. So you'll notice that here is part C and part D. Sorry, this is part D, and it's much more detailed in terms of blocking in the script, images, and explanations for the why she has chosen to do this. So I hope that gives you an idea of what to expect for the director's notebook. We'll go through referencing and things like that in the lesson, but that's basically an explanation of each criterion. Um, and if you have any questions, always check back to this video and then feel free to ask me if something still doesn't make sense. I hope this has been helpful.